the American movie The Exorcism of Emily Rose, and the German movie The Requiem, each based their story in part on the life of Anna Annalise Mikkel. This is an attempt to summarize the true story of Annalise Mikkel. The story begins in Lifeling, Germany, where Annalise was born on September 21, 1952, to Joseph and Anna Mikkel. After Annalise came three sisters, Gertrude, Barbara, and Roswitha. An older sister, Martha, born in 1950, died of a kidney ailment in 1958. Joseph owned and operated a successful sawmill business in Klingenberg, while Anna kept busy in their office. Annalise's deeply religious grandmother often looked after the children and helped educate them in their Catholic faith. Annalise suffered various childhood diseases, including mumps, measles, and scarlet fever. As a result, she was held back a year in school. She was a good student and hoped one day to become a school teacher. She played the piano and accordion. Joseph and Anna were strict parents and took their Catholic faith seriously. They regularly attended Mass and prayed the rosary together. In September 1968, an unexpected change occurred in Annalise's life. After a brief blackout in the afternoon, later that evening while asleep, Annalise suffered symptoms like an epileptic seizure. She labored to breathe. Her arms became stiff, her tongue was as if paralyzed, and she wet her bed. She recovered and all seemed well until about one year later, when a similar attack occurred. A visit to a neurologist showed no abnormal brain activity on an EEG, while the symptoms described suggested grand mal epilepsy. Annalise was quite ill at this time. Her tonsils were removed, and she subsequently contracted pleurisy and pneumonia. In February 1970, she was moved to a hospital in Middleburg, which specialized in bronchial and lung disease. There, she was diagnosed with heart and circulatory problems. Her roommate at the hospital later described Annalise as a happy and religious person, with a positive outlook on life. Annalise never discussed her illnesses. A third attack occurred in June 1970. Annalise was finally released from the hospital in August 1970. Her family and friends noticed a marked change in her. She was quiet and withdrawn. Annalise would later describe to a neurologist and a psychologist some of her experiences while in the hospital. She stated that she saw ghastly, demonic faces which left her terrified and depressed. She also experienced terrible stenches described as being like burning fecal matter, which she only experienced in the beginning. Visits to several physicians continued. After an attack in June 1972, a visit to a neurologist resulted in the drug Dilantin being prescribed. Dilantin is prescribed primarily to treat grand mal epilepsy and psychomotor seizures. Often Annalise's body became stiff and she would have brief absences or blackouts. She continued to experience the demonic faces, absences, and terrible stenches while on Dilantin. In early 1973, Annalise complained of hearing rapping noises inside her closet, under the floor, and above the ceiling. On one occasion, Anna found Annalise in their living room, in front of a statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary, her face full of hatred, and her eyes jet black. In the fall of 1973, Annalise described to a psychologist how she was apathetic, and her depressed state left her with thoughts of suicide. Around this time, Annalise visited her neurologist, who suggested consulting a Jesuit. Annalise's father felt that a pilgrimage to the Marian Shrine at San Damiano, Italy, might be good for Annalise. When Annalise arrived at the shrine, she could not enter as she said her feet were burning. She described to Thea Hine, who led the pilgrimage, that she could not drink the holy water or look at sacramentals or holy pictures. During the pilgrimage, Annalise grabbed Thea and broke a medal that Thea was wearing around her neck. Annalise also exuded a horrible stench like fecal matter, which everyone could smell. In spite of the trip to San Damiano and Annalise's totally uncharacteristic behavior, Annalise and Thea became friends. Thea stated that she began to pray for Annalise. Annalise later told Thea that she knew when Thea was praying for her. Thea noted what Annalise said and verified what she had said was true. Thea also said that Annalise stated, among other things, that Jesus told her that there would come a time when the whole world would talk about hell and the devil. Several priests were sought for, for advice. Thea contacted Father Adolf Rudwick, well known for his expertise in possession and exorcism. 
He had written several books on the topic. He requested a written account of the trip to San Damiano. Although there were possible signs of possession, he said that he could not get involved due to his advanced age and the fact that he resided in Frankfurt. Father Ernst Alt and Father Karl Roth, along with several other priests, had on occasion met to discuss Annalise's condition. Several weeks before Father Alt met Annalise, two letters were hand-delivered to him, one written by Annalise and one written by Anna. Upon physically receiving these letters, Father Alt had an experience unlike never before. He became nauseated and overcome by a strange excitation and distressed feeling. Later that evening he had trouble saying Mass and experienced an intense stench as though something was burning. Prayer brought little relief. It was not until five the following morning that it was over. The following evening when Father Alt discussed what had happened, the night before with several of his priest friends, they suddenly all experienced a horrible stench. About two weeks before Father Alt met Annalise for the first time, he described her as modern, devout, intelligent, and honest. In the fall of 1973, Annalise began her university studies in Würzburg. She was majoring in education, music, and theology. Father Alt visited her regularly. She felt depressed as the demonic faces continued to haunt her. In November she met a fellow education student by the name of Peter. They began to see a lot of each other. Annalise described her condition to Peter in December of 1973. She stated that at times she had no control over things. Depression coincided with the demonic faces and stenches. Also at this time, Annalise visited a neurologist and a psychologist in Würzburg. The psychologist felt Annalise suffered from a neurosis caused by a domineering father and hatred for her mother. He suggested epilepsy as the cause of her seizures. The neurologist switched her from Dilantin to Tegretol, as the Dilantin had not completely suppressed what he surmised was epilepsy. When she met Father Alt in March of 1974, she said that at times she was unable to pray. Father Alt continued to pray over and for her. Annalise always felt better after Father Alt's visits. Father Alt felt that there were many things which Annalise was experiencing physically and spiritually, which could not be explained by epilepsy. Various letters written by Annalise to Father Alt provided insight into Annalise's condition. She felt that she had no control, which left her depressed. At times she felt like she was in a trance. Other times she experienced an aversion to confession, which felt extreme and she was unable to receive communion. 